Welcome here to our second No Name podcast. We want to thank you guys all for um, sending in some suggestions. We got a couple that we are considering, um, and we will keep it open, the floor open for another week or two, and see what other names we get in. And we will let you know the winner when that time is up. This morning, I am going to be uh, emceeing. I'm Crystal Taves, and I've got some other people around the table with me. So introduce yourselves. To my right, we have Brandy, Brandy Bradshaw, Director of High School Ministries. And next to you, Thalia, Pastor of Care, working with Vic in the Care Department. And Imran Daniel, Director of Multicultural Engagement and Missions Department. That is the longest title out of all of <laughs> us. You win. Yeah. Wow. It's I excellent. Do. Yeah. You must be important. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we invited you on, the first male guest on our podcast, because you're yeah. very important. And so we'll hear more from you later. I feel honored. Excellent. <laughs> We've had some feedback from our first podcast. Um, One elder wrote to me and mentioned that fireworks are outlawed in Abbotsford. So just so you know, we have listeners that are listening in and we are aware of (laughs) the legal ramifications of anything that we are saying here on air. Um, (laughs) The legal ramifications. ramifications. Yeah. (laughs) We will have police after us for these things. Um, We wanted to start off this morning by interviewing Imran and having a did you know section for our podcast. So Imran, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got here to Northview, because you are not from Abbotsford originally. Really? Yeah. Oh, I thought I was. (laughs) Um, I was born and raised in in Pakistan, and I moved to, I came to Seattle in 2007, went to school there for a year, and then came to Vancouver to work. So I got a job here in a hotel, because that's what I studied um, in Seattle, and then um, lived in Coquitlam for four years. Moved to Abbotsford, got married, did my internship here in Northview last year, and um, here I am. Anything you want to tell us about your wife and her <clears throat> previous relationship with one member on this table? Oh. <laughs> that sounded so bad. Well, <laughs> that sounded ridiculously bad. Uh, previous previous relationship. relationship. Well, Brandy was talking about all kinds of blackmail that she had for Imran and Suzanne because she was Suzanne's roommate yes. Yes. previously, and she graciously granted Well, she did uh, at her wedding, like a receptions. Um, I think a uh, friend of mine, uh, he was emceeing the evening, and he said, like, introducing one of the bridesmaids, Lisa, and he's like, she was one of her favorite roommates. The, the best. The best roommate. The best friend <laughs> shouted out loud from behind. <laughs> what? I thought that was me. <laughs> I would like I to say that I shouted <laughs> from the absolute back table of the room yeah <laughs> i can't imagine you so that explains that, that you had a great relationship, that we, had a great relationship. Year, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we did your wife was yeah. the most welcoming person that i've ever met actually suzanne was the first person it through the young adults ministry that welcomed me into the fold here at Northview, and i think many people have that testimony of her and her love for jesus and her hospitality so I better tell her to listen to this podcast. Though. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. She's getting some props here. Yeah. That's right. So how many languages do you speak? Uh, I speak five fluently. Wow. wow. Which ones? Uh, Punjabi is my mother language, then Urdu, then Hindi, Farsi, and some English. Wow. <laughs> I don't know if some of those are real languages. Well, because to... you probably never heard them, I'm gonna right? Have to... <laughs> I'm going to have to Google that. Go for it. <laughs> Or we can ask Jeremy to Google it. I speak Hubadoo and I speak... <laughs> Kubadoo, see, like yeah. You, you well, we know. asked this question yeah. once at our Wednesday morning Bible study, and there was like, two people in the room that actually had their own imaginary language, and they spoke it to each other. And that was quite an interesting thing to find out. Did they end up end up working with Thaley? No. They're <laughs> <laughs> quite stable, other than their imaginary language. No, Maybe they need to. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. Maybe they need to give Thaley a It was just call. interesting that they both knew it, and they both huh. talked it to each other. Yeah. Were they single? No. Oh. No. Yeah. <laughs> I want to say you there. <laughs> so what yeah. are you doing here at Northview? Um, Give us some info on that. I am working in the missions, local missions department where Darcy is my boss and um, working uh, with South Asian community and our goal is to reach out to them with the gospel message and um, yeah. So what different programs are running right now? We have uh, ESL program um, 
happening every Sunday from 3 to 5 and then we also have cooking classes that we do once a month which is part of our ESL so on that day ladies don't have to go and go through the books they can go straight into the kitchen learn wow. um, I always say like not Canadian food but because there isn't any Canadian food but <laughs> North American food um, so, so they yeah. come in and work in our kitchen here at North Yeah, Cape? so yeah. They, they come here. So like last week we had like 17 um, wow. ladies come to That's that. That's a full kitchen, yeah. Yeah, how to make uh, three kinds of muffins, which <laughs> is good for the men because they had to try at the end and make sure they're all good. Yeah, yeah so. good for the kids. Yeah. The kids can take them to school the next for day. For sure, yeah. And some of the moms basically, they all take uh, some home to see if their kids like it and yeah. then they can bake it at home. So how many uh, people do you have coming out? For the Sunday afternoons? Um, it it kind of depends every week. Um, we have like 50 people throughout this whole time. And then we have like 10 to 30 people uh, on a weekly basis come through mm -hmm. these doors, uh, including kids. So we have kids, um, our volunteers help them uh, do their homework, and then the parents learning English in a different room. So That's all on the Sunday afternoon? Uh, all on Sunday afternoon. We're also starting the same program on November 7th at 7 uh, p.m. here at Northview uh, to teach them English because so, some of the people wanted to come twice a week. Okay, so wow. the same people but coming twice a week. Yeah, and yeah. we may have some new people who can't come on Sunday so they can come on Thursday night too. So uh, we have that. We also have a hockey program with uh, some middle school, high school kids. And when's that? Uh, that's on Wednesday afternoon 4 to 6. And that's in the bubble or where? In the bubble, yes. Yeah. Um, and then after school program. Right? Yes, we With also YouTube? have yeah. after school. Uh, after school program, basically we go to one of the public schools and help uh, some of the kids who are immigrant, new immigrants to Canada. And their first language is Punjabi or Hindi. And uh, we have volunteers that can go and help uh, with their reading or uh, help them do their homework and things like that. So, or just be there and be a role model to them. So have you had trouble getting volunteers for this or people have been lining up to help you or how? No, it been? actually it's been great and we're blessed to have like so many volunteers. We wow. had to ask some of the volunteers like, okay, we need hmm. to hold off. Hold off. Wow. We have enough <laughs> That's for a good now. Thing. Yeah. 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 So yeah. no, it's re it's really good in that uh regard. <clears throat> yeah. People have a vision for it and they're excited to jump on board with that? Yeah, they, I believe. Yeah. 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 So we have enough volunteers right now. And do you need yeah. people that have specific training or what kind of people are you looking for when they come to volunteer? Um, if, if you want to teach English, then uh, it, it's good to have the teaching background, some sort. Yeah. But if not, that's okay too because our goal is to connect with them and be friends with them because yeah. some of the South Asian community, they uh, love to have friends other than their own community. Right. And that's what I think what we see when we go to Clearbrook Parks or different other parks. They're all sitting together with their own community because they can't speak the language. So our goal is to encourage our volunteers to connect with them, build a relationship, that friendship, and uh, help them learn English. But at the same time, you learn some of their language if you like. So, yeah. That's great. So if people want to get involved with you, how do they get in touch with uh, they how can, they contact you? Uh, they can email me at idaniel at north3.org. So Daniel spelt as everyone would think it is. D-A-N-I-E-L, the book of Daniel. Yeah, it's very biblical. Yeah, very biblical. For a Pakistani, that's pretty good. Yeah, there's some Christians in Pakistan too. Blown our mind. Yeah, so I mean, you can also go on our website, north3.org. And go under serve and then mission and then local mission. So if you scroll down the page, you'll find uh, my name there. Or you can also email Laura Veens. Yeah. So one of us will be able to get back to you. Laura Veens? Yeah. Uh, Laura Veens. Uh, oh, good job. That? We yeah. got the W going there. Yeah. 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 So you guys Just work checking. together? Uh, yeah, we do work together. Yeah. 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 So, so if Imran, if there was a pastorate that was maybe listening yeah. and they wanted you to come, is that okay? Come to their pastorate to talk to them about connecting with their community and their Punjabi neighbors and South Asian friends? Would that be something that you'd be open to doing, a way that you can resource um, our community here at Northview? Absolutely. Uh, we did, yeah, absolutely. We did a training with our volunteers two weeks ago on Saturday, uh, and I was teaching on how to share the gospel and using their uh, scripture as a bridge to bring them mm. into the Bible. Oh, wow. Interesting. And, um, teaching on Sikhism again this uh, coming Wednesday 
at uh, World Religion class that Andy oh. Stryker's teaching. At CBC? Uh, no, 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 TLC. 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 TLC class, oh, okay. yeah. Okay. And uh, I'm inviting two of my friends. They were like, grew up in a Sikh uh, family and they're sharing their testimonies as well. Yeah. They're uh -huh. Christian, so. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, great. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you didn't grow up in that community yourself, though you were. I grew Christian up in a family. Christian home yeah. in a Muslim country. Yeah. So, so for you, it's just the same as us learning. You know the language. You have the same language, but in terms of us um, learning no. another faith structure. Well, or? well, no. Growing up, I mean, because India, Pakistan was one country before '47, so we yeah. have the same language, same culture, everything. Yeah. And the funny thing is, back home, we, uh, when it comes to watching movies, we watch Indian movies over Pakistani movies, so mm -hmm. lots like of that stuff. like American over Canadian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Bollywood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like all those Bollywood movies have that some of some sort of religious aspects aspects to that. Right. So, so like, you have familiarities yeah. with their Pretty much, yeah. worldview in yeah. terms of, yeah, yeah. religious. And we have some Sikh people in Pakistan too. So yeah. will you be also teaching a Bollywood dancing? <laughs> <laughs> I'll pray about it. <laughs> I'd sign up for that. Yeah. Yeah. As would, I think, Ezra. Can you oh. see Ezra? Ezra Bollywood dance? <laughs> wow, he'd be so sweaty after it. So, <laughs> so sweaty. Oh, yeah. It's so true. You need multiple <laughs> hankies. <laughs> so we're going to go on, and Indra, Imran is going to stay with us to give us some perspective. We're going to talk about social media today. Um, that's our uh, the main session that we're going to work through today. So Brandy is going to start off by giving us a bit of an overview on different social media apps and programs and uh, just different platforms. So, Brandy, take it away. Okay. I am the youngest, so I guess it does make sense that I'm the expert on social media yeah. in this room. What? Is she okay, older than you? Come on. Um, I am no. the youngest. How old are you? You can guess. How old oh, are you? Oh, gosh. Yeah. I'm not the youngest. You're the youngest, are you? Yeah. <laughs> Dang. At least I look the youngest. Sure. Yeah. Oh! I'll give you that. Yeah. <laughs> You're just an old married man now, Emma. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. You are younger than me. <sighs> but the youth keeps you young. Whatever. Okay. Yes. Types okay. of social media. <laughs> social media. Types of social media. Yeah. Okay. So we have uh, Twitter, which is like what they would call a micro blog, which is this, you're limited to, I think, 140 characters. Like Dixon you're sending out, to be. Yeah, yeah. You're sending yeah. out uh, status updates of what you're doing, where you are, who you're with, what you're eating, what you're dressing like, yeah. what your hair looks like, anything and everything. Uh, Facebook, which would be a bit more of a profile-based social media. So you create an online persona, profile of yourself, including where you went to high school, all these about and information. You can share as much or as little as you want. And again, status updates and what you're doing, what you're eating, blah, blah, blah. Then you have apps on your smartphones, which can range from your culinary apps to your uh, banking apps. But uh, most of the social aspect ones are like BlackBerry Messenger or a popular one right now is called Snapchat, where you take a photo and it immediately gets, quotation mark, deleted from your phone. Um, but it's kept on their servers, we know. Um, but it, you send a picture to someone else with just a small comment on that picture, like a goofy face, I'm thinking about you, whatever. So it's a Snapchat fun name and you can kind of set how long it shows up on someone's you can phone, set right? how or long it shows comes, up yeah. yep yep so, that so be... that's a very popular one right now social media uh you have instagram which is a photo based one you share photos you follow people the same with twitter and facebook you like them your friends it's all about that interconnection instagram is photo based you can edit your picture and you can show pictures of anything really but you can flag them as inappropriate so there is some uh there is some, some monitoring oversight. Yeah. and some oversight to yeah. Instagram. Then something popular recently is something called Vine, which is a video um, media outlet or whatever you want to call it, program. And it is recording a six-second video. And so a lot of people have been using stop motion and making it a longer idea, stop motion being able to film something longer. And other people are doing things like, you know, this is what happens when I get up for bed and my parents yell at me. And that's literally all it is. It's a six video seconds. of like six seconds of what I feel like on Mondays. And it's a video of someone like ah, getting out of their bed and feeling horrible. There. That's a vine. So these are spreading like rap rapid fire. 
So how do people, they just follow other people on all these things? Yeah, they follow other people. And the thing is with social media, it's all interconnected. So you have a Facebook, but you also will take a Vine. You'll record the Vine on the app on your phone. Then you'll post it to your Facebook. And then you'll take And people take can a, comment and on then it. You can, and and then, then Instagram is following up with Vine. Mm-hmm. But Instagram has now opened up video. So you can now video on Instagram to compete with Vine. And it just, it's all together. Um, and of course, the more popular ones, YouTube, kids, and, and others can have channels. You follow that channel and you upload content. People get paid to be professional YouTubers. Um, you have a channel and it gets you get paid by YouTube because of the amount of views you get and advertising. And then there's the forum aspect of social media, which the biggest one is Reddit. And it's just online text conversations about any topic under the sun. And the biggest forum uh, for Reddit Correct me if I'm wrong. Reddit users is the atheist uh, discussion board. Is so people just the, post ideas, um, yep. thoughts, thoughts, articles, pictures, what? jokes, whatever. I mean, Reddit is spelled R E D D I T. Reddit. Yeah. Mm. So that's the very quick rundown of social media. You can also include texting. Yeah, I would yep. include texting in that. Um, What's the general framework? Is there any age limits on? Any of them? Yes, or there's what, uh, Facebook. There's an age limit, but it's based on your what you what user input. Yeah, you so, have to put your birthday in so there. So technically, yeah. you can't be thirteen. I think isn't thirteen. It? You yeah. have to be thirteen or over. But any of the other ones, you like Instagram 10 and or just, yeah, uh, <clears throat> I believe it's all the same. Basically, They're all you, thirteen. It's all user input. So really, there is a restriction, but you can put in that you're 16. And nobody knows. Right. Yeah. It's not. So it's sort of honor system. Yeah. As it were. I don't th- I don't believe actually that Twitter or Instagram have an age restriction. And texting Well, I was thinking Instagram. Texting, Instagram. Yeah, texting, 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 yeah. And then like, and then iPods there's blogs, and right? And then people have their own blogs too as well that they follow. The blogosphere. You could be busy with this all day. Yes. Yeah. So that kind of goes into the That's next that. question. What are some of yeah. the threats? What do you see as problems with the social media world that we are in? Daily? Daily. Daily. I yeah, feel like I just spoke for a long time. Do you yeah. Know? yeah. Well, huge Sorry. issue of time management and self-control. Mm. I mean, kids are attached to their phones. It basically doesn't leave their hands. And when I was a parent in middle school, which was a few years ago, they had a meeting where they were just saying, parents, watch out because your kids are texting way into the night and they're not yeah. getting any sleep. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Thousands of texts a day and, you know, Facebook and now there's Instagram and Snapchat. I mean, you could just be going all day. Mm-hmm. And kids are often sitting in groups on their own device. Right. Texting each other rather than yeah. talking to each other. Yeah. Or, I yeah. don't like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it bothers me so much. Like, I know some friends and you're talking to them and they're like, yeah. Okay, and they're on their phone, like the thumb power going on. Yep, yep, yeah, got it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, come on, put that thing away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah. So do you see this only with kids, Thalia, or well, are you and, seeing it? Well, I see it a lot with women because, you know, some people post on Facebook all the time, which is not necessarily bad, but what else are you doing with your time? You know, Pinterest, you know, as, as soon as I start going on Pinterest, half hour is gone yeah. because it's just a time suck. And that would be for a lot of these, too. Do you want to define what Pinterest is? Just in case. <laughs> guess, oh, yeah. that yeah. don't know. Yeah. 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 yeah, I didn't Pinterest. mention yeah. Pinterest. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, my daughter and her friends are frequently on Pinterest. It's where, what do you call it? You just find it better than I yeah, can. Yeah, it would be like an online bulletin board, yeah. as it were. That's so good, anything yeah. you like online, you can pin it to your board. Yes. And then anyone you can, can decide, look at it. I have a Christmas board. I have a, mm-hmm. a very unsettling theme that is happening is the young girls in my youth group have already created wedding boards. Oh, yes. And Ouch. so they are posting pictures. It's like pictures people like, choosing their china their, when they're... <laughs> ooh, and I'm like, okay, I mean, yes, but... And for me, I limited yeah. Pinterest because every time I go on there, I feel extremely dissatisfied with my life. I want to redo my house and I want to redo my wardrobe. And I'm like, you know, so I true. just can't do it. So I, for me, I have completely cut out Pinterest because I just, I just feel dissatisfied every yeah. time I'm on there. That's a good point. Yeah. Very good point. I know someone who had read an article on a blog <laughs> about <laughs> a parent that was like, literally, it's like, can we just like call this what it is and stop one-upping each other on these ridiculous birthday parties for our, like, four- and five-year-olds. Like, remember when it was just, like, hot dogs and go play with a stick outside? Yeah. Now it's, like, these massive themes. you got to go to the dollar store to spend, like, thousands of dollars. And it's, like... But really, it's that same thing. You buy all these fancy toys for your kids, but they just want to play with the box. Yeah. It's kind of the same. Like, you're doing it for you, not for the kids, necessarily. Yeah. It's a danger. Yeah, totally. 
I see a couple more dangerous ones too. I've worked with a number of kids that have been caught sexting and that's sending yeah. pictures of themselves either in bras and underwear or swimsuits or naked body parts or, and or the actual texting yes. like language. Yes, that sexual too. Sexual language. Yes, or pictures. And I mean, so we were talking in the lunchroom about a couple of weeks ago about this and people were asking, "Well, why do young women like high schoolers do this?" And I said, "Well, this is a huge boost for the high schoolers." You know, it's popularity, mm -hmm. it's ego boost, it's flattery, it's yeah, power, a lot of mm -hmm. attention. Yeah. And so we forget that uh, young girls, they're getting something out of this. Mm -hmm. So the boys are getting a whole stack of pictures on their phone of their friends, these young women, but girls are getting something too. And we need to talk to our girls about that. Or not yeah. necessarily even friends. I mean, obviously, yes, yeah. this is an issue that is very real in my work and, um, Often it can be that a guy will be in a relationship, have a girlfriend, but he has a friend or not even a friend, just a girl that's in his class, yeah. that's maybe seen as a target or mm -hmm. seen as weak or wants that attention so badly. And so they begin a sexting relationship with that person, but they don't talk to them at school. They don't, nothing. They are literally just used for that pleasure for yes. that person. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. bad. It is. It's out there mm -hmm. and very it's, degrading it's bad. And, very, and, yeah. and within the Christian world, it's very secretive because it, it can it cannot affect your public persona. And yeah. so it can be very, very shameful and very, very, uh, I don't know. It can just be happening so yes. much in the Christian world. It is happening in the adult Christian majorly, world too. Majorly, yes. majorly. And yeah. it's like, oh, that would never happen. And it's like more so than anything like parents and friends even yeah. Yeah. need to be checking each other's phones and just asking those honest questions. Yeah. yeah. And asking like, kids and adults, that? what kind of pictures are you taking? Yeah. That's the other thing that's become a problem is, you know, people are taking unsuspecting pictures of other people's behinds and all kinds of right. stuff like that and using that on their, as their collections on their phones. I like that you just said behind. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to be appropriate. Yeah. yeah thanks. Really appropriate. <laughs> we do. It's... We do want this to be inappropriate. Yeah. Yes, we yeah. do. It's very above bar. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's also a lot uh, when some of the kids are struggling with their self identity as well. Um, and I think that's where parents uh, can come and play a huge part in their life. Just. A dad, like from mm -hmm. opposite sex, kind of talking to the daughter, hey, you look beautiful, you have all that, like just aff affirmation, yeah. right? And like mom do the same thing to a boy, like, yeah. hey, you have that. Just kind of like, rather than, because they're trying to hear that from someone else and trying to find that through classrooms or sexting, the word yeah. you used, or all that, which is kind of... yeah huge I think too yeah. to get the attention yeah. from someone else through I mean I probably wouldn't recommend a father say you have all that to their daughter but. <laughs> <laughs> no but but you know what I mean right like I mean she totally knows what you mean. Yeah, yeah like the okay daughter whatever else you want to use that just brand new like, dad <laughs> I'm so not sure that we have you around Brandy. Like we just might not know <laughs> you know, that it's a or not. Dad's attention. Do yeah. not say that. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the other threats that you see? Um, just in terms of s stress, in terms of yeah. what kind of things? Yeah. Well, yeah. for me, um, definitely it's a time sucker. Um, I, I I came up with a term mm -hmm. that it is social media. Yes. There not we social go. media. Coined social here media. On the No Name Podcast. Trademark yeah. Brandy Bradshaw. Yeah. 2013. Yeah. Um, I find it in my own life that I need uh, that connection and I go to my social media for that affirmation. Right. Affirmation of myself, affirmation of all kinds of things. The and things that you post are cool. And I have yeah. no, like, I have no qualms saying I'm a confident person. So I actually don't need that. Like when I actually sit down and go, oh, pfft, totally. And I walk away from, from social media, I, I don't actually need that but it becomes so cyclical in my life that it sucks up this time and I'm checking it and I'm checking it and I'm checking it and I'll all of a sudden wake up and oh my goodness like I've checked Instagram 15 times in the last hour like what's wrong with me like what's going on and and it actually caused a lot of stress in my life because when it comes to work and being connected with kids and Instagram and I realized I was still working when I was doing that at home and so it caused stress that I didn't even realize was there it's very much in a 
that bubble. I was that frog in the pot, and the the water was getting warm, and I wasn't even realizing yeah. it was happening. So. so you weren't ever unplugging from the life of the yep. kids that you were serving, and you nope. were always kind of nope. Yeah, yeah. And what a what a breather it was uh, to take time off from that and yeah. just step away and realize, oh, sign life. off. I'm life. signing out. Yep, yeah, totally. It's yeah. so good. Yeah. yeah. What about conversations that take place online or Facebook or what kind of red flags do you find in those kind of things? Oh man, they shouldn't, you shouldn't have conversations. You shouldn't have conversations on Facebook. Like <laughs> a conversation is an interacting between two people. In my opinion, it's like, it's almost like te- text messaging. I don't have text conversations. Like yeah. if I'm starting to get into something with someone, I'm like, I just call you. Yeah. Like, yeah. what are you? <laughs> yeah. I just I'm call you. Ask you I do not want yeah. to type this out. Like, cause yeah. you're not going to hear my tone of voice. You don't know what my... Like, there's so much that can be misread, and yeah. no People get offended very easily and upset because of the tone that they're reading in that you might not even mean. Yep. Yeah. And then you put the smiley face, and then how do you read that? (laughs) What does that mean? Exactly. And then the winky smiley face. Yeah. 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 Or the the colon with the money sign. (laughs) What does that mean? Yeah. I don't know. What does that mean? (laughs) Are you sticking your tongue out at me, or are you sticking your tongue out at me? I don't know. Very different. Yeah. What's happening? Yeah, but those are the bad things. There's some bad things about yeah. social media. Those are bad, yeah. but there's some good but things. There are some good things, yes. Yeah, so those things. are we wanted to talk about next. What are, what are good ways that you can use it? Well, I use it as a conversation yeah. starter. You know, hey, I saw on Facebook something, and then use it as a way to launch into conversation. So people that you know from other settings or meet at church or yeah, whatever. Like, yeah, like um, this summer our daughter was baptized. Yeah. And so people would see that on Facebook and they said, hey, we saw that Ava was baptized and then we would talk about it and it was kind of an exciting conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Otherwise, a lot of people wouldn't necessarily know. Right. So other ways, um, what other opportunities does it have for us? Uh, for me, it's huge for ministry. And, and I share that with all kinds of youth workers. And when we have our interns that come in, I'm like, you know, some of them like, oh, I don't really, I'm not really on Facebook. Well, you're getting on Facebook. Like (laughs) it's a part of ministry now and it's huge. I I love it for that. Um, It's basically, I say it's like reading a kid's journal often because it's a place where they're free to just, they're just sharing. They're sharing what's going on in their heart, what's going on in their mind. Often they're sharing it through music lyrics, which does annoy me, but it's a reality of working with teenagers. They're just writing out the lyrics? Yeah, they'll take a, they'll take a stanza or whatever. They'll write it out and I'll be like, oh my goodness, like, what is going on? We need to talk. And then they'll be like, oh, Brandy, it's just more, it's like my favorite song, just music lyrics. I'm like, okay, well, because it sounded like you were suicidal. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. don't be posting things like that. Yeah. How am I supposed to know that's a song? Yeah. But um, no, it's great to get into, like Thalia said, like you, in the same way that you said discussion starter, it's also a dis- it's a discussion starter for, hey, let's get together for coffee. I noticed that you posted right. this and what's yeah. going on and in both the positive and the negative. Right. I want to encourage you with what you've been posting lately. That's awesome. Or I want to maybe say, hey, you, maybe you shouldn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a work Facebook site, Thalia, and then my last name is at Northview. So if you're not my friend, you can be my friend on there. Tricky. And I use it as a way of keeping tabs with women at our church. I'm finding out what's going on in their life, and is there anything that I can send them a private message and say, oh, that sounds like you're having a tough time. Do you want to talk on the phone, old-fashioned way, or get together for coffee, or just even comment a little bit as to what's going on in their lives? Great Brilliant. ministry tool. Yep, mm-hmm. great ministry tool. Yeah. Good for communication. Yeah. yeah. To get I mean, people you to come got, to events you, and you stuff. Don't you have that for uh Yeah, we have a Northview women's? Women Facebook page. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. we have about 200 people that are on there. And then we have our Northview Facebook page, which has about 1,500 or so right. people that yeah. like that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a good way to get information out to people in an easy way that's not intrusive. Like, if they want to check it, they can. If they don't, yeah. they don't. It's not like it's in their face, yeah. like spam emails or whatever. Totally. And I think we all yeah. put um, resources on there, like yeah. Gospel Coalition totally. articles or relevant mm-hmm. magazine articles, things like that. I think yeah. we use it for that. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Um, so if you see somebody that's, do you use it as a form of communication? Like if you see somebody that's down, do you post stuff on there that encourages them or do you ask to? Yeah, I'm always checking my Northview Facebook site. Well, maybe once or twice a day. Maybe not. Oh, always. Because <laughs> you just once said or twice that a day. Always. <laughs> always. 15 times an hour. Like, yeah. yeah. And if I see, see something that was that's a concerning. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll just mock you for your confession. get beat up too. for my yeah. confession. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. 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 So if I see something that's concerning, I usually send a private message and just say, oh, it sounds like you're having a tough time. Do you want to talk? Mm-hmm. So that's something that I do for sure weekly. 
I'm sure that happens. Yep. So is this a cultural thing that's North American only? What do you guys experience in Pakistan? How, how, what would be your impact coming in kind of from outside to this culture? What's are different? You, are or... you asking me? No, I'm asking him. Oh, because well, you're facing... Pakistani? <laughs> she, she sort of looked pa- like brown, Facing yeah. the Pakistani in the room asking about Pakistan. I'm oh, not sorry, expecting you to be wanna, just an wanna, expert on Pakistan. Just wanted to, just yeah. want to clarify. Yeah. It's like, well, I could answer, but I don't know. You've been to China, but not to Pakistan. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think like uh, coming back from the community because uh, culturally we are very family oriented, right? Unfortunately, don't want to sound too harsh. Here we are like very individualistic, mm-hmm. totally. right? Yep. Um, but because we are family oriented, we don't need all these social medias. First thing, A, we can uh, have that because it's not available, yep. which is great. <laughs> um, B, it gives us more time to kind of spend time with the family rather than like looking at the phone and just engaging with your siblings or your cousins and stuff. Um, so we don't have very um, many social medias like that. Unfortunately, in some of uh, some cities, it's uh, getting a bit, bit much and they are just like, they have Facebook. Uh, one of my sisters, she's the first one to get on Facebook. She got on Facebook about a month ago. Uh, she never used it before, but she's going to college, and she heard about all that. And even though we talk to each other on the phone pretty much every day. Every day, wow. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but still, like, yeah. she's just like, you know, this is what the rest of the society is doing, so I need to be on that Facebook. Yeah. So it'll be like, interesting to see how things change there in the last yeah. five or ten years, right? Yeah. 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 But, I mean, again, like... Yeah, yeah, because it can happen really quick. Yeah, really yeah. quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, I mean, we don't have a whole lot, especially in my uh, hometown in the village. We don't have, like, a, growing up, we didn't have TV even like right. till four years ago or uh, computer and stuff like that. So if we're gonna kind of wrap up in terms of how we want to encourage people um, in our culture yeah. to use Facebook in a wise way, to use other social medias in a wise way, what kind of things? Uh, do we want to suggest? What kind of questions do we want them to ask themselves as they're on these social media platforms? I had one. Yeah. yeah. Does it lift mm-hmm. up others or does it tear others down? Whatever you're posting or whatever so you're texting. You're making. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Um, <clears throat> definitely want, one of the big things I do is I've stolen it from John Piper and in a lot of the ways that I use technology, so not just social media, but technology in general, um, does it rob me of my affections for Christ? Or does it stir up my affections for Christ? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes social media does stir up my affections for Christ, like some of the positives we've said. But but more times than not, probably it robs me of my affections for Christ. Um, And I do that with, like, everything. Like, even I did it with, like, using a microwave. I felt like I was becoming an impatient person. Hmm. And (laughs) I was like, how is technology actually making me an impatient person? So I decided to do a month without using my microwave. And the first time I had to reheat a pot of soup on the stove, this angst came up <laughs> from within me because you can't walk away from it, right? No, like you you're stirring it stir because I don't want to cook it. Yeah. I'm just reheating it. <laughs> and I'm stirring the soup. And I am just like, I want to be multitasking right now. I want to be, I was so impatient to see this soup hmm. heat up that I was like, oh my, not good. <laughs> so it was robbing me of that affection for Christ, that that work of the Holy Spirit in my life to produce that good fruit. So yeah. these are good things. Ask these questions. <laughs> yeah. Evaluate what what social media does to mm-hmm. you. Imran had a good question. I think it's also good to ask ourselves this question, like, is it a substitute for our to find a true community, or right. is it just to... Yeah. Um, so be aware of kind of what needs we're trying to fill. Yeah. Yeah. Social media. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right That's good. I like that. Yeah, That's I do great. too. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I take donations. <laughs> I so have credit card only. <laughs> credit card credit card only. only. Yeah. <laughs> do you take credit cards? <laughs> no. no. Okay. PayPal. Then, yeah. yeah, PayPal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're over time. Here but we are. But just, we're just do it. Who cares? Just do it. A couple minutes. Just a couple minutes. Okay. Uh, we wanted to end this section by um, just kind of wrapping up, wrapping up a little bit in terms of prayer too, and in terms of a Bible um, implication for it. And so, Thalia, you had a verse that you kind of thought you fit. Oh, I use fit all the time. Share. Yes, yep. Ephesians five fifteen. 
Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. And I use that a lot, actually, trying to be wise with our time. Mm. That's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Knowing that we won't have, yeah, we have to take stock of those things. So um, I'm going to pray. Uh, for us, and then we'll just... But we're going to stay tuned after the prayer, right? You have something really quick for us. A little quick. Yeah. yeah. A okay. Little a little, so stay tuned. Don't, little, don't go away yet. A little, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sweet. Let's pray. Lord, I just want to thank you for this time that we've had together. Um, I thank you that um, we just have so many opportunities within this world to do good or to do evil with the things that are in our hands. Mm -hmm. And those things change over time. They're different in the Bible than they are now, but yet our opportunities um, are the same in terms of the tools uh, that you give us. Uh, we can use for good or for evil, Lord. And so we have these things uh, available to us now. We have um, just so much technology at our disposal, and we have still the same ability um, to discern that you give us. And so I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would fill us all uh, with the knowledge of your will, that as we spend time in your word, uh, that we would understand uh, what you have for us, that you under we understand the calling that you have on each of our lives, um, mm -hmm. and that we would just uh, submit ourselves, Lord, to your will and to your, um, to your guidance, Lord, for each of our days, that we would number them correctly as you encourage us to do so often in your word, Lord, that, you would, um, that we would just be aware that our time here is limited and it needs to be invested mm -hmm. well for you and for your kingdom. Mm -hmm. And so we pray, Father, for all the youth uh, that Brandy works with, for the women that Thalia works with, and just for our church community and for Abbotsford and for our country, Lord. Um, we just pray, Father, that we would keep these things uh, under control, um, under the control of your Holy Spirit, Father, mm -hmm. um, and use them um, for your glory and for your grace. So we pray these things in the name of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Okay, Crystal. Okay, we just wanted to end off uh, just a brief little, in my opinion, piece. Uh, we were credentialed yesterday, and the people asked me what my frustrations were working here at Northview. And I would say my only frustration here is the misperception that people still have about women's ministry. And we've had some great videos that Brandy's done for us with people mm -hmm. making potpourri and <laughs> doing silly exercises. And, uh, but um, it's just a constant frustration. It's getting to the point for me where it used to be just, okay, I can understand. Yeah, maybe we just need to uh, give up more information. But as time goes by, I'm like, come on, ladies, get it. And I'm getting more and more frustrated just about the fact that at Women's Ministry, we have great teaching going on. We have great biblical content. We have um, just a lot of places for people to learn and to grow. And that's not fluffy and it's not emotion and that's not Kleenex. And so uh, we just want to encourage you guys to come out for women's events, whether that's retreats or our Wednesday morning, our Monday night whoa, sessions. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you plugging your ministry? I am I didn't plugging. Know you were allowed to do that. <laughs> what? You will be plugging another time. This was just time. an opinion I section. I yeah. to, uh, yeah, talk about my ministry here. <laughs> yeah, we are plugging Imran's ministry I'm today. All of a sudden, now. she just slips it in there. Like, yeah, cool. Wow. Hey, I'm the MC. I can I do think, what I want. That's true. Oh, yeah. okay. I think you need to start a... a like a women's ministry recovery group for those people who have been <laughs> hurt by, by the recovery yeah. Yeah. And, the by the, and the doilies yes. and the people who Tea feel parties. like, and so they're like these, you know, new, new, almost like new believers again. They're very sketchy. They're just not it takes sure. takes a little while. I don't want to really, put my foot yes. in the door because what if? And yes. I am one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> I was I have one been, of those people. Yeah. I have been yeah. converted by Crystal. Yes. <laughs> Brandy, when we can get you to come to the Gospel Coalition <laughs> Conference with 5,000 women, oh gosh, then we will know that you No are. way. <laughs> so many women in one place. Oh my gosh. I'll go crazy. I will go crazy. Okay, we won't push you that far. Thank Maybe you. Maybe I'll have on a Wednesday morning. Thank you. Yeah, we'll put you in the recovery group. You are going to teach a class still Wednesday morning, aren't you? Yeah, a I, weeks well, from now. Uh, yeah, a couple weeks from now, and then like, uh, and then maybe in January. January. Yeah. yeah, in the in the new year. Yeah. No, totally. Yeah. No, it's good. There's no fluffy. No, and you've done the women's retreats and love those. Yeah, the women's retreats. Yeah, yeah. I, I and I like to see the women, the, the my fellow recovery women make <laughs> yes. that. And I've felt that over the last little while. They've communicated to me like, you know, I hear you. I also didn't like women's ministry, so I specifically see my target audience being my fellow in recovery of women's ministry. Yeah. Bring it back. It doesn't need to be. So I'm a fighter for you. Excellent. I'm a fighter for you. That's good. Good to have you on our team. <laughs> So we're signing yes. off then now yeah, for so our second our, No Name podcast. Again, do we know what our next the next one topic? Um, 
No, no, but we'll keep it. No, we'll keep it. Christmas? No, something that about was the one after that. That's one. the one after that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I think it might to be to do with human sexuality from the conference. <gasps> oh. Yeah. oh, that's I'm pretty sure I am that. MC on that one. Oh, let's try and mention sexuality or sex in every podcast. Okay, because I think we have so far. <laughs> we did on the first one, didn't we? <laughs> Time to wrap it up, people. Yeah. Sorry. 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 We're not going to steal anything from Thalia for next time. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So we'll sign up for now and yeah. see you next time. Bye. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Ooh, it was long. It was long. Yeah. It was about a 40.